Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Juan Landano and today we will continue with video number two of understanding lenses. So let's dive in. So we talked about a lot of basic concepts last week, right? Um, uh, image stabilization, whether the lens has that or not, that's a cool thing to check. Whether the lenses are prime or uh, zoom, whether they are manual focus or autofocus, whether they have the autofocus capability, uh, a few things about weight and money and having glass elements inside and how many and, you know, that kind of thing, right? A lot of basic stuff that um, sometimes we don't think about. But uh, we're going to continue today. We're going to dive in a little further. Today we're going to talk about macro lenses, what that means and numbers. We're going to talk about some numbers, all those numbers printed on the lens. When you look at that, you go, what is all this? I got, so you look at this lens over here, it says 58 millimeters with this funny little circle and a line running through it. It says macro, it says 100 millimeters. It's, so is it 100 millimeters or 58 millimeters, right? These are questions that people have. Um, one colon 2.8 that doesn't mean anything to many people, right? So we're going to break all that down and it'll, it'll make a lot of sense after we're done, okay? So um, let's talk about macro. So macro means large. I'm sure it's some Latin root uh, of some type, right? Um, and micro means small. Now, if you're shooting little things with a macro lens, because that's what people use macro lenses for, right? To shoot little things. Why, why, why do you call it macro? Macro means large. Well, it means large because you're enlarging what you're photographing, right? So I go up to a tiny little flower with this lens, a hundred millimeter macro, and I go right up to the flower and I fill the whole frame of my picture with this small flower. And when I look at it on the wall, once I print it, oh, it's beautiful, it's big, right? This little tiny flower that was this big fills a whole frame, right? And when you enlarge that, oh, it comes to life. So macro lenses do that. They make things look big. That's why they call macro, right? Micro, think of micrometer, measures little things. So you have different types of macro lenses. You're going to see the word macro stamped on a lot of different lenses, right? Because they let you get close to things so you can make them look bigger. Um, one category is zoom lenses, right? Zoom lenses give you that variable focal length we talked about. So you can start wide like a 24 millimeter and you can get a little narrower with a 70 millimeter. You can zoom in, right? Without having to walk around much. Um, my 24 to 70 is a macro lens. That means I can go up to a flower and I can enlarge it and make it look pretty, right? Uh, those lenses are cool. It's nice to have a macro feature on a zoom lens. That gives you one more thing, makes it even more flexible, right? But they don't work as great as having a macro on a prime lens, right? This is a 100 millimeter uh, prime lens and it's a macro, right? Um, there's a 50 millimeter macro. So that's really going to let you get in. The pictures tend to be a little sharper because there are less glass elements. Remember we talked about that? So macros on prime lenses, if you're shooting a lot of bug photography, insects, you know, butterflies, flowers, which let me tell you, a lot of people are into that. It's beautiful. I am. Um, then you really want to get that prime with that macro on it, right? So you got the zoom with macro, you got a prime with macro, and then there's a macro with a macro. That is a lens that is completely freaking useless for anything other than shooting macro. If you put that lens on your camera, you can't see anything with it. You're not going to see people or cars or planes or skies or nothing. Zero, nada, zip, zilch, blah. But you put it on your camera and you get close to an ant, and let me tell you, you fill the frame of your camera lens with the ant. You can see its eyes and its little hairs and all kinds of things, right? That's a true macro lens. Canon makes a 65 millimeter macro. And like I said, you put that lens in your bag, you may use it a couple of times on your trip when you see a cool bug or leaf, you're not going to use it much. So think about it, right? If you're going to pay the kind of money for a lens like that. Um, but when you need it, holy moly you're going to take the most awesome freaking shots, right? And they sell like flashes that you put on the on the tip of a of a, you know, of a lens instead of the the flash being on the camera, the flash is here on the lens. So when you get close to that bug, the flash uh, is like a ring and it lights the bug. Uh, oh man, and, and there are others that, you know, you can adjust and move them around. Um, so a lot of cool things to do with macro photography, okay? So that's what macro means. You're going to get in there and you're going to make little things look big, okay? So now we dive into the numbers, all the numbers, all these freaking numbers, right? Let's talk about a little circle with a little line going through it, right? That's on the lens. I don't know if you're going to be able to see mine over here. Uh, 
it's over here and that's too small and I know if I zoom it in the camera's not going to do that right now because it doesn't follow the zoom the focus point I mean so it's got a little circle and a stick going through it and it says 58 millimeters what does that mean right all lenses are going to have that that means the opening diameter you see that diameter of of this opening right all around it's 58 millimeters now why the heck is that important is it important can you disregard it does it matter do i need a bigger one so you can say mine is bigger than yours or bigger is better well let's talk about that <laughs> i'll leave that that in your mind you can follow that so if you look at this this lens has a filter that i can take off right if I unscrew it a thousand times, right, this protects the lens. I have to know what diameter my lens is if I'm going to buy a filter for it. So I bought this cool filter and it's a 58 millimeter filter and it fits my 58 millimeter lens, right? So I need to know that. Um, now, let me tell you, a bigger mouth doesn't always mean it lets in more light, right? You may have a 77 millimeter opening, but... It's got image stabilization, so it's got all kinds of gyros in here and stuff. Uh, <clears throat> your lens might have way lots of elements in it, uh, so it tends to block light. Um, so when you look down the inside of that lens, the opening might actually not be that big because there's a lot of stuff going on in here, right? Uh, screws and bolts and nuts and all kinds of tubes. and um, You know, it's a very, very complicated piece of science that you're holding, right, in engineering. So... That wider opening doesn't always mean it's going to let tons more light in. It might just mean that your lens is busy and it's doing a lot of stuff, right? Um, this is a 2.8 aperture f-stop, uh, which means it's pretty good. It's pretty open. And look at the diameter. It's not a really big diameter lens, right? I have other lenses that are a much bigger diameter that are also 2.8 because they got a lot going on. They got image stabilization, they, you know, the autofocus mechanism, all those glass elements and things to move them around. So keep that in mind, right? But you need to know that number, right? It's your diameter of the lens. That little circle with the stick going through it, it's the diameter of the lens, right? So now we come to f-stop, right? The f-stop, the aperture. This is represented by a number, like 2.8. This is a 2.8 lens. Um, and it's got a one colon in front of it because it's a ratio, right? It's comparing it to one mean, meaning that's if there were no interruptions and all light was coming in, it would be a one. So compared to that one, it's a 2.8, right? It's a ratio. So what does that mean? Well, it means a lot of things. First of all, you got to remember this lens has a bunch of different apertures, right? I could put it at 2.8. I could put it at 4, 5.6, um, 8, 11, 16, 22, and there are others in between there too. So why would a company write one of them? Why do they write 2.8? Why don't they write the end one, 22, right? The smallest, uh, because small is easy on a lens, right? You can close that aperture and make it small so that very little light is coming through. That's not hard to do. The hard thing to do is to open up that aperture and let all that light in. That's complicated to do on a lens. So they give you that number, how wide the lens is going to go, okay? Um, and that's the 2.8 here. It's 1 colon 2.8. That's the number you're looking. And here, here's the thing. On a prime lens, it's one number. It's 2.8 because there's no zoom, right? This is 100 millimeter 2.8. Uh, you may have a 50 millimeter 1.8. And that brings us to the next thing. Zoom lenses... Not always, we're going to talk about this, but because they zoom, like a 24 to 70, for example, it might say 3.5, so it'll say 1 colon, right? And then it'll say 3.5 dash 5.6. Now, what does that mean? That means there are two f-stops written on there, right? 1 colon means compared to 1, which is all the light comes in and you're not blocking anything, this lens is a 3.5 to 5.6, just an example. That means that at 24 millimeters, right, 24 millimeters is when you're wide and you're grabbing, you know, a lot in your field of view. At, at 24 millimeters, your f-stop is 3.5. It's, it's pretty open. It's letting in a good amount of light. But when you go to 70 and you narrow down your field of view and you're getting that house on the top of the hill now, you're not seeing the whole hill. Now it's a 5.6. That aperture diaphragm inside 
closed up and it's not letting that much light in anymore. And that's it. You At 70, you're not going to be able to open it to 3.5. The lens will physically not allow you to do that. Um, but if you go back to a wide you know, f-stop, back to 24, then you can open that lens back up to you know, 3.5, which means that diaphragm is open again inside, right? So that's something to think about because that's going to limit you. If you're shooting a wedding and you're inside and you're at 24 millimeters, and say it's 2.8 to you know to 3.5, and you're shooting at 2.8. Oh, all that light's coming in, beautiful. The minute you go to 70, and you and you get the bride alone on the dance floor, you can't do 2.8 anymore. Now you got to go to 3.5, which means the diaphragm inside your lens just closed, and it's blocking some more light. That's not good, right? So on expensive, on expensive zoom lenses, you pay to have one f-stop written on there. So it'll be just like this one. It'll say one colon 2.8, which means no matter whether you put it at 24 or at 35 or at 50 or at 70, it's a 2.8. It's always gonna be wide in its maximum aperture, okay? And of course you can go smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller all the way to 22, not a problem. But at its maximum aperture, it will always let you keep it at 2.8 or whatever the number is on that lens. It may be 3.5, it may be 1.8. Um, you, I have a 24 to 70, that's 2.8. And I have a 70 to 200, that's 2.8. That's magnificent. That means at 70 millimeters, uh, it's 2.8 at 100, at 150. And at 200, when I'm like zooming in, you know, a bird on a tree, whatever, 2.8. I can open it up and let a lot of light in because sometimes those trees are dark. The canopies block a lot of light, right? So wonderful thing to pay for and have if you can afford it. Um, but those are the numbers. So f-stop, right? It's written as a little f and a number in many places. Lenses just write that one colon and then that number right next to it. Prime lenses have one number always. It's going to be either 2.8 or 3.5 or 5.6 or 4.0, whatever your f-stop is. The smaller the number, the wider the diaphragm in here opens, right? The uh, bigger the number, the smaller that diaphragm is and it blocks more light, right? Uh, and remember, the number they're giving you is their widest diaphragm, okay? And zoom lenses, if they're affordable and they're cheaper, uh, they're gonna have two uh, f-stops, two apertures, right? Because they zoom, you know, it's going to go from 3.5 to 5.6 or 5.6 to 8.0, right? So at one focal length, it's one f-stop. And at the other focal length, it's the other f-stop, okay? And if you pay more for your zoom lens, then it'll be just like this prime. It'll be 2.8 or 1.8 all throughout your, your uh, you know, your focal length, okay? So that's something good to know. One thing that manufacturers probably have, you know what? I never paid attention to this. Um, yeah, they do have it. Yeah, of course they do. I've seen it. No, I, this, this number I've actually seen. It's the minimum focusing distance, right? You buy a lens and if it's not macro, you know, macro is going to let you get close up, right? And it's going to let you make that little thing look big. But if it's not macro and many lenses aren't, right? Because you don't need every lens to have macro. Um, truly with my hundred millimeter macro, that's all I need. Um, if you have a lens that doesn't say macro, and you know your minimum distance for focusing a subject is three feet that might be a problem if you're doing a lot of you know interviews with people and you need them to be close to you or or whatever right there are all these different scenarios so look for that number right uh, or when you rent that lens check it see what's the closest you can get because there are zoom lenses or telephoto lenses that are like 200 millimeter where you're zooming into something far away and bringing it up close making it look big um you know, their focusing distance could be eight feet. Could you imagine a focusing distance of eight feet? That means that your subject, when you use that lens, has to be at least eight feet away or further. Oh, that might be a limiting factor if you're looking for a lens, right? So nobody ever talks about that, but that's an important thing to keep in mind, okay? Weight is important too. If you're carrying lenses around and you got a bag and you want to have three or four lenses, weight is important, right? And that's a mixed feeling thing, right? If the lens feels a little too light and too plasticky, or I don't know, that doesn't give me a good feeling, right? Uh, is it going to be around for a long time? Is, is the sharpness always going to be tight um, and crisp? I don't know. I like a lens to feel like a good solid metal lens, right? But that adds weight to your bag. So that's a number you need to look at when you buy a lens. How much does it weigh? If you got a big DSLR, 
like I do, and then you have a big lens, oh my gosh, that starts to add up in your bag and your hands, all right? That's another number. And something that I'm not even sure, and this is the one I, I meant originally, that I'm not sure is advertised, it probably is, I never paid attention. How quick does it lock onto your subject when you're trying to focus, right? A kid is moving around and you push the button on your camera halfway down so you can attain a focus and it's going that's called hunting the, the lens is looking for the subject and you see that you hear the zoom going back and forth and it can't lock right that's a slow focusing lens it's not locking onto your subject it's not attaining the you know your subject quickly uh, you want a lens that as soon as you put that put that thing in it, zoop, it locks focuses and bam you take that picture you know, you're walking in New York City, you got that camera on your side, and you see this cool bus with like graffiti on the side. And I'm telling you this story because it happened to me back in the days of film when I had a, 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 um, a manual focus lens. So you had to be really quick. But, you know, if you have your autofocus lens and you put that camera up to your face and, and you're hitting the button and your zoom lens is going bzz, 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 and it can't, it can't focus on that bus because the bus is moving you lost a good freaking shot. That's basically what's gonna happen, right? So make sure your lens focuses quickly. That's really, really important. So here's a question that I've been asked. That's a really good question, actually. Um, people buy, uh, are looking to buy a lens and they'll say, hey Juan, do I need to concern myself with shutter speed? You know, my lens, I don't know what kind of shutter speed this thing has. I'm like, you know what? That's a really good question, actually. It's not a stupid question. Here's the thing. This lens on the inside, you can't see it here, but when it's on the camera, you can. It has a diaphragm that opens and closes. We've been talking about that, right? Your f-stop or your aperture. 2.8 means it's really wide. Uh, 3.5, 4.0, 5.6, 8, you know, 11, 16, 22. Then, you know, you're left with a little pinhole, right? Um, so they want to know shutter speed, right? Well, that diaphragm in your lens controls how much light comes in. It doesn't control speed, right? The speed is actually in your camera. So I have my older camera laying around. It's a 5D, a Canon 5D. So I'm gonna show you something. I really shouldn't do this. I'm holding the mirror up and in the back of the camera here, the shutter or the curtain, also called the curtain, is laying in the back there. And it's in front of the sensor. It keeps the sensor protected. So when I hit this button, it opens, you, you saw that shutter. I don't know if you got to see that or not. I'll do it again. Actually, my battery just died. Yeah, my battery just died because this camera's just sitting around. So that shutter or that curtain opens and closes. That is what decides the shutter speed on the camera, not on the lens, okay? So how much light is coming in, right? If you're taking sports photography and there's a, you know, uh, a dude or a girl running, you know, kicking a soccer ball and you need to capture crisp action, you want that shutter to go, Ch -ch -ch. you want it to capture really quick. That's shutter speed, okay? And if you want that waterfall to look all dreamy and slow, then you keep that shutter open, you know, for a second or so, right? Or as long as you need to. That is not controlled by the lens. That's in the back of your camera, right next to the sensor. That opens and closes and controls how much light is going to hit that sensor. So while shutter speed does control the amount of light that comes in, because if your shutter goes and opens and closes really fast, it's clipping a lot of light that's coming in, right? It's not allowing a lot of light to come in. That's not really... So, you know, when you talk about... I, I'm trying not, not to confuse you here. Um, it does. It, it is used for controlling light. It is, undoubtedly. Every photographer that's been shooting for a while is going to use it for that. But its main purpose is to stop action, right? We're going to talk about that. So when you make that curtain, that shutter in the back of that camera go really fast, it's stopping that runner in, in its tracks or a race car or a motorcycle, whatever it is, right? And if you leave it open for a little while and then close it, like, then you make that waterfall look dreamy and, you know, really cool, right? Um, so that's what shutter, the shutter in the back of the camera is used for, shutter speed. And it's not controlled in the lens, right? But photographers know that if they make it fast, they're going to block some light out. And if they make it slow, more light's going to come in. So they, they use it to control light, right, um, as well, right? But the diaphragm in here is what you're using to control the amount of light coming in. And depth of field and bokeh and, and a lot of other things that we'll talk about later. Um, but right now, it's just understanding lenses, right? 
What can I do with this lens if I buy it, right? Is it going to limit me in any way? Is this the lens I need? Um, is this the lens that is going to let me do the photography that I love, right? Whether I'm shooting flowers or landscapes or people or cities, right? Um, urban photography, right? Um, is it architectural photography? Am I working for a realtor where I'm shooting the insides of homes in natural light? Do I need, I need a really wide angle lens and I need a lens that's going to open up well, you don't want to open it too wide because those are those are features of lenses that that we'll talk about later. Uh, you want a camera with a good sensor in that case too, right? So, but but lens is very important, right? Uh, they used to tell me back in the day, whatever you pay for your camera, you should pay for your lens. Now cameras have gotten, you know, if you get a good professional camera, you're talking three to four grand. Um, you don't have to pay that for for the lens that's going to go on there every day, but you will pay two grand for a lens that's going to go on there every day, and you know, like a twenty-four to seventy. Um, 2.8, right? It's going to cost you 2,300 bucks. So that's important to know. Okay. So one of the things you want to do at this point is go online. And if you've been thinking about a lens, if you have a good lens or two, and you're thinking about maybe what your third lens is, even if you don't have the money right now, start looking at what that might look like, right? Uh, check out some lenses. If you have Nikon, go to the Nikon website just to get a feel, just to see what they make, right? Uh, check out their lineup, right? What wide angle lenses do they have? What telephoto lenses do they have that bring images in and make them make them close to me, right? Look like they're close to me. What zoom lenses do they have, right? Where you have a variable focal length and you can go wide and zoom without walking around a lot. Um, what's the price of these? Check out those numbers that I showed you, the diameter of the, you know, the little circle with the line going through it, the diameter of the mouth. Um, you know, that'll, that'll tell you one number for your filters, as we talked about, that go on the tip, right? Uh, lens cap, if you lose it, if you lose your lens cap, you're going to need to know the diameter so you can buy another one. Um, if you're buying an aftermarket one, you know, if you're buying your brand, then you just tell them what lens. Um, and other attachments, like we talked about a flash that goes on the mouth of the lens, you know, you're going to have to know the diameter, right? The other one is that f-stop. You want to know what that f-stop is. Um, you know, how much light is it letting in? How much is the maximum aperture that that lens will give you? That's what you're going to pay the Buku bucks for, right? The wider you ask the manufacturer to make that diaphragm for you on the inside, the more they need to push their, their bounds of engineering and, and physics, right? And science, because that's complicated to do. And there's a lens out there that's a 1.0. Could you imagine a 1.0? Canon makes a lens that's a 1.2, an 85 millimeter 1.2, which is a beautiful lens for portraits. And at 1.2, that diaphragm is open almost all the way. Remember, one is it's not blocking any light, right? That's why it's one colon 1.2, because compared to one, which is not blocking any light, this particular lens is a 1.2. And that lens is a lot of money because you're paying for that engineering. The engineering that lets you do that which is going to let you take these beautiful, beautiful portraits where the background is blurred and you get this bokeh effect where, you know, little light coming into the trees looks like uh, circles. Oh my gosh, it's very dreamy, right? And, and you pay for that. So I hope this video was useful. I hope the first one was as well, uh, understanding lenses. And now we have a little more specific uh, topic to talk about when we talk about lenses, right? If you're ever with a friend talking about lenses, you understand all that stuff from the first video, right? Which is a little more fundamental. And now you understand macro, what it means. Macro is big, bringing things up close, making them look big. Uh, the numbers, right? The diameter, the f-stop, the weight, the focal point, you know, how, how close can I, can I get to, sorry, uh, the distance of focusing, right? focusing distance, minimal focusing distance. How close can I get to something, you know, before the camera, uh, you know, stops focusing and can't focus anymore. Um, it's, it's these kinds of things that I hope help you, uh, you know, deciding, right? So let me put up this um, diagram, right? Let me put it up right here. And what you can do is pause it if you need to, okay? Here are four examples. Check out these four examples and Tell me what kind of lens it is. Do you think it's a wide angle? Is it a telephoto? Uh, is it a zoom? Is it a prime? Just write on there what you think, okay? Remember, 50 millimeter is what the eye sees, okay? We talked about that when we're talking about prime lenses. 50 millimeter is what the eye sees. Anything smaller than 50 millimeter, like a 35 millimeter, a 24 millimeter, it's a wide angle. It's letting more field of view. You're grabbing more of, of what you're seeing around you. 
if you go above 50, like 80 and 100 and 200 and 400, now it becomes a telephoto. Now you're not grabbing as many things around you. You're focusing on, you know, one thing that's really far away and bringing it in, making it look close. Okay. So remember that. That's very important for this. When you have to tell me, looking at these lenses, if it's a wide angle or a telephoto lens, you've got to know if it's on one side of the 50 millimeter or if it's on the other side of the 50 millimeter. 50 millimeter. Is it smaller than 50 millimeter, making it a wide angle? Or is it larger than 50 millimeter, making it a telephoto? Okay. So look at that. Uh, you know, when you, when you pause it, um, think about it for a while, write it on a piece of paper, fill it in. And then at this point, if you hit play again, I want to let the answers come up. I'm not going to show you yet. I'll show you a little bit later, but you can stop it. Um, you can stop it and it'll give you the, um, the answers, right? So you can look at it, um, uh, and see if you, if you understand lenses enough now, you're getting the feel for it. Okay. Uh, but just go online and check out lenses and then ask yourself while you while you're looking at the lens if it doesn't already tell you in the description is this a wide angle is this a telephoto is it a prime is it a zoom right uh, does it have uh, you know image stabilization uh, does it have autofocus most of the new lenses do right so anyway um, take that knowledge with you I hope it's useful I hope you buy a cool lens one day using this information and hit the like if it, if it helped out um, Subscribe if you haven't, please. Um, helps me a lot. Uh, I'm going to keep that content rolling out. So I'll keep sending videos your way until you know everything there is to know about photography because I want to keep learning so I can keep teaching. So I've already got 30 so odd years of experience, but it's not enough. I got to keep learning. So I'm going to keep learning. We we'll may in the future talk about editing stuff too, like software and editing techniques. We're just going to keep the stuff coming. So Take it easy. Thank you once again for joining me and have a wonderful, wonderful remainder of your day. 10-4. Ciao for now.